Good afternoon, everyone, and for the last time, Glück auf from Oberwiesenthal. We are glad you are once again joining us our, on our live stream for the last event on this uh, competition program at the first stage of the FIS Summer Grand Prix 2023. My name is Luis Holuch and I'm looking forward to the last dance we will be having in just a couple of minutes with the roller ski event in course of the first ever mixed team sprint here in Oberwiesenthal and we are already seeing the compact start list for this event. Team Norway 1 and Team Germany 1 will lead the pack simultaneously after the jumping round into the race, six seconds ahead of Team Germany 3. And the Germany 2 following closely by just a gap of 21 seconds as well as Team Austria 1 with 27 seconds. So the basic format has been one competition jump we saw earlier in the morning. And then both competitors the male as well as the female athlete will ski six kilometers. But before we get into that action, we will have a brief recap of what happened yesterday at uh, the second event of the FIS Youth Cup. The future stars were competing on uh, the smaller Fichtelberg ski jump HS 69 and also on the roller skis here in the Sparkassen Ski Arena and showed their talents once again. It's been sunny in the afternoon as well as uh, early in the morning when the jumping rounds took place and again the two age categories 2006 until 2008 as well as 2009 until 2011 were competing against each other. The biggest success for the home team was scored by Nick Seidel with a third place, the only podium place for Team Germany yesterday. And the athletes showed they will they were able to make the switch from running shoes onto the roller skis. The dominating girl in their category has been Julia Betz from Switzerland, who scored her second victory in less than 24 hours. And the same went for Timon Brickletz from Slovenia, 14 years of age. Also, he was able to repeat his victory from the previous day. And all eyes also were on our friend from Thailand, Korvaik Sandi. On Friday, he competed for the very first time internationally as the first competitor from Thailand. And yesterday, he even scored his first points on rank number 20. So if he and uh, his colleagues continue to impress like that, they might become stars of today, as soon as somehow possible. All eyes on the actual stars of today in the pouring rain of Uber Wiesenthal once again. The trickiest of all conditions you could possibly imagine at this time of the year for Julian Schmidt. Espen Björnstad and the other 14 athletes, as you saw it, 16 teams in total on the start list from eight different nations. Germany and Italy even nominated three of them, the maximum number. And the only teams that have put together only one team, one single team were Czech Republic on 12th place after the jumping round and Team Poland on 16th and last place. German jumping coaches Heinz Kutin and Kai Bracht uh, being a helping hands here in uh, the pouring rain of Oberwiesenthal. And uh, this also speaks a lot for the cooperation inside the Nordic Combined family, trying to support each other as best as possible. And that's also what the athletes are going trying to do on the cross-country track. So, Björnstar and uh, Julian Schmidt 
started at the same time. The two teams were just separated by 0.2 points after the two jumps early in the morning. And also Team Germany 3 is already underway with Manuel Feist. And all athletes are skiing a lap of 1.25 kilometers, so the shortest one on the course map of the Sparkassen Ski Arena close to the peak of the Fichtelberg Mountain. 5th place team Austria 1 with Christian Deutschel and Claudia Burka already underway as also team Slovenia 1 right now with Gaspar Brezel and Ima Volavšek. 44 seconds their gap to the top and then we have a pair of teams that have a gap of 57 seconds to the top. Norway 2, Kasper Mund Flatla and Ida Maria Hagen, as well as Austria 2 with Sebastian Brandner and Lisa Hirner. And I would imagine, especially in this uh, compact and very dynamic program and format, the skiing times are going to be a lot faster than yesterday, especially because the track isn't as uh, tricky as the one we saw yesterday. But I already have to inform you that uh, Team Austria 2 is not on the start. Sebastian Brandner and Lisa Hirna are not competing in the roller ski part. And depending on which part of the track the athletes are on, also the technique is uh, varying, but the, the rain isn't making the athletes' life a lot easier. And uh, this uh, picture is exactly what we could expect before. There's a small train forming up in front with uh, Björn Stor, Schmie and Feist, while Johannes Ritzig is trying to close in. And here we already see Gida Westwall Hansen preparing for her start. So it's going to be one lap per each athlete. And then you've got to make the exchange here in the Sparkassen Ski Arena on the start. Finish straight. And this is also going to be a bit tricky if uh, three athletes are coming in simultaneously. You have to pick your right teammate in order to make the exchange, but uh, this looks uh, very smooth so far. And now the women are underway with Gita Westwall Hansen, Natalie Ambruster, Svenja Wirth, and also Jenny Novak. As uh, Team Germany 2 has pretty much, pretty much closed the gap to the trio in front of them. Also, the only remaining Austrian team has made the first exchange. Christian Deutschel sending Claudia Purka on the track. Gita Westphal Hansen trying to set a fast, fast pace right from the beginning. So the task for Natalie Ambrust and Svenja Wirth is basically to try to keep up with the pace of the dominating Norwegian. She actually scored the second most points inside the, the jumping round. Olya, only Julian Schmid scored more with his jump on on the Fichtelberg Schanze this morning with 100.5 meters actually. But so far, Armbruster is able to keep the tempo as well as also Svenja Würz. And closing in are also Jenny Novak, apparently. And you can see how much rain it actually is. It's giving us a bit of uh, impression of aquaplaning, actually. It's something uh, you wouldn't like to have, especially on this uh, roller skis who don't have any brakes, as you might know. So you, as an athlete, basically have to take care of that. 
And with the VIP number 9 here, Daniela De Jori. Making up some ground for her team Italy. Also Ida Maria Hagen from Norway is trying to do that. And the gaps between the top four are opening up slightly, but as long as the distance is like this, uh, you certainly have some hope to be able to close in as the athletes make their way back to the start and finish area where their male colleagues are waiting for them. So it's still Norway in the lead. Gita Westwold Hansen is sending Björn Stahl back on track with a gap of four seconds. Nothing to worry about for the Germans, but obviously it's uh, more challenging if you always have to close the gap rather than uh, staying right behind your opponent. But so far, everything is going according to plan for Team Germany as well as for Team Norway number one. And Björn Stark, quite surprisingly, told us in the flash interview after the jumping round that their main task is to keep up with the tempo of the Germans. But so far, Norway have been able to dominate the race to a certain degree. And also Kasper Mohnflatler and Ida Marie Hagen are trying to close in to the top results. The race is still long enough. 12 kilometers in total. And we have just finished 2.5. So uh, still a way to go as uh, Julian Schmid with his powerful steps is closing in again on Espen Björnstad. Not giving the Norwegian any kind of break here. And here we have the other, other two Germans with Johannes Ritzek and Manuel Feist. And also a view back to the bottom of the field. And actually Team Italy 2 got disqualified. In the meantime, we don't have any information why, but uh, as a matter of fact, Domenico Mariotti and Veronica Gianmuena are not in the race anymore, so it'll be only 14 teams finishing the race as things stand right now. And the advantage of this format uh, certainly is that you have a short break, some time to recover whilst you're waiting for your teammates as we see the third exchange so Norway 1 and Germany 1 are even on time pretty much as well as Germany 2 and Germany 3 two seconds behind so four teams basically fighting still for the three podium spots And in the end, it will be these women who will decide who is going to take the top spots as the weather conditions are getting worse and worse with every second. Also the visibility is getting worse. And also the temperatures here at the Sparkassen Ski Arena have dropped to about 10 degrees Celsius. So it's Ah, it can be questioned whether this is actually worth calling an actual summer Grand Prix. 
But kudos to all athletes out there, they are trying to make the best out of it. Of course, you could argue they don't have any other choice, but uh, it's easy to use the bad weather condition as an excuse, and you don't see that here today. They are powering through all the way from start until now. Florian Eichinger, the German women's head coach, pushing his athletes to the top of the hill. While Svenja Wirtz has lost the position against uh, Jenny Novak ahead of her. And also, the track design doesn't really allow you to relax at least a tiny bit. You have to be focused in every single second. That's also what the athletes are showing here. With uh, bib number six, we see Emma Wolafšek from Slovenia, who had a strong appearance in the roller ski race yesterday by uh, running the fifth fastest time overall, which was just enough in order to finish a second. Uh, Jenny Novak being instructed there to take up the ribbon from the two athletes ahead of her. And Johannes Ritzek is uh, waiting for his next appearance as well as Espen Björnstad and Julian Schmid. But ever since the race started, it was Norway 1 who were leading the race. But what we conclude so far, it uh, is definitely a very dynamic format. There's a lot of things going on with this short lap, which has proven to be a good decision for this race. Those many exchanges. And the close gaps we have had after the jumping round. Team Italy won on fifth place with uh, Samuel Costa. And for Team Slovenia won Gaspar Brezel. Team Norway 2 still on uh, seventh position. A non mover in the intermediate rankings until now. Kasper Mohn Flatla and Ida Maria Hagen. Not too many position changes at the bottom of the field. Uh, Poland still on last rank with quite a big gap to the teams in front. Only Italy three with uh, Greta Pinzani and Aaron Kostna have made up a place against the uh, United States. With Grant Andrews and Alexa Breibeck. So for the first time in this race we see a change in the lead. It's now Julian Schmid leading Johannes Ritzek and Espen Björnstad. But for the moment, the Norwegian is able to keep the tempo of the two Germans who are trying to increase the pace. Getting lots of support alongside the track, obviously. But so far, no, Norway haven't cracked under pressure, while Manuel Feist and Svenja Wirth seem to be out of the fight for a podium as things stand right now, as now the women are taking over once again Natalie Ambrosta, Jenny Novak and Gita Westwall Hansen. Natalie 
So this is going to be interesting. Will Ambrusta try to dictate the pace or will Gita Westwald Hansen take the initiative as she loves to do? And also interesting to see the difference in the technique while Gita Westwall Hansen basically moved into a downhill skier position. Natalie Ambruster tried to make use of the skating steps, sort of. Okay. Samuel Costa seems to have opened the gap up again for his teammate uh, Daniela De Jori. We're just uh, five seconds at the split time before. Now it's again 17 seconds, so it's basically an up and down. But uh, Team Italy seem to have the upper hand of uh, Slovenia. As the tempo here in the leading pack isn't that high for the moment. Westwald Hansen seems to be able to save a bit of energy in the slipstream behind the two Germans. And I have a feeling she might be able to make use of that the longer the race is lasting. And now the Norwegian has moved into the lead again. Yeah, again, the advice tried to adapt the rhythm of Westwald Hansen, but uh, she has opened up again, again a gap towards the Germans. And also Erik Frenzel, we can see here on the left-hand side, is noticing that and also giving a feedback over the team radio. Yeah, and it's uh, a couple of seconds of an advantage Norway are having again. Björn Stahl. Leading again, uh, Julian Schmidt uh, eagerly waiting to be starting his race as uh, the stamina of the women is slowly running out. But uh, there's one more exchange coming up. So a couple of minutes to recover and then you have to do it all over again for one last time. But Team Italy are applying even more pressure on uh, Team Germany 3 at the moment. Samuel Costa and uh, Manuel Feist basically even on time starting their last lap. And also Ima Volavšek once again doing a good job on the roller skis. And now it's a duel between Gaspar Brezel and Kasper Mohnflatla for this sixth place. I doubt they will close in on uh, rank four and five. But it's obviously easier for everyone if he's not running a lonely race, just like here with uh, BIP number 14 team USA 2 with Alexa Brabeck. And here we see BIP number 16, Joanna Kiel. Glad to have 
Poland as part of this race. Even though they are being lapped right now, but Julian Schmid has not only closed the gap towards Björn Stab, he is also now unleashing all of his energy in order to break free from the Norwegian, but he's basically keeping up with the German. And of course, if you're closing in on uh, bench, uh, on uh, back markers, you're hoping they will get out of the way, which is not the, their easiest task. Ah, but Julian Schmid is just uh, proving his great form this weekend here in Oberwiesenthal. And now the fight is eventually on. Two seconds, the gap between Schmid and Björn Stark at this uh, last exchange, but uh, this is a rather easy task to solve for Gita Westwall Hansen as Germany to seem to be able to maintain that third place even though Slovenia and Italy are closing in from behind still but a gap of over 20 seconds is hard to make up in uh, just 1.2 kilometers. Oh, Westford Hansen had to move, move out of the way of uh, the post of Natalie Armbruster as uh, Jerzy Konvalinka is trying to unlap himself, which he also does. And this is also something which comes into play. If you maybe try to attach yourself to the runner in front, it's great to see that Ima Wolaf shakes still can have a bit of a joke with uh, Claudia Purka and also Ida Maria Hagen here. Kasper Breitzel is handing over the responsibility to his teammate. And still leading the actual race, Natalie Abrusta. So you need to watch out for the red bibs. Those are the leading two. But Ambrusta also knows if she wants to win for herself and also her team, she has to stay in front. Once Westwall Hansen is going to overtake her, she won't be able to be finishing first. But Westwald Hansen did exactly that. She's overtaken the German and is now opening up the, ga the gap again and I doubt the German will be able to close it for once. So it's pretty much looking like another historic victory of Norway who have also won the first ever Junior World Championships mixed team right here in Oberwiesenthal in 2020. And believe it or not, back then also Gita Westhol Hansen has been on the team. Can't be a coincidence. Actually, as the Norwegian is about to score yet another historic victory, Gita Westhol Hansen and Espen Björnstar are winning the first ever mixed team sprint in Nordic combined history. Congratulations, gratuliere Norge. Great job. Almost a start-finish victory, but also compliments to Team Germany 1, Natalie Armbruster and Julian Schmid finishing second, just like the German mixed team in 2020. And also the third place goes to Germany. Germany 2 with Johannes Ritzek and Jenny Novak. A very successful stage for the home team here in Oberwiesenthal. It's also the second Norwegian team is rounding up a very solid performance. But on fourth place, it's Italy 1 with Daniela De Iuri and Samuel Costa scoring another decent result for 
The Squadra Azzurra, Team Italy one on fourth place. Fifth place for Germany three, or we could also call it Team S4 Bayers Bronn, Manuel Feist and Svenja Würz. Ida Maria Hagen has managed to overtake Imma Wolaf Shek for the sixth place. So Hagen and Kasper Mohn Flatla on sixth, ahead of Gaspar Brezel and Emma Wolaf Shek on seventh as the fight for the next positions is still on. We're waiting, of course, for all teams to finish the race. Team Austria won, not able to transport the great ski jumping performance also on the roller skis. They have lost five positions on the asphalt here at the Sparkassen Ski Arena. And uh, like I said before, Can you please go? This is the only Austrian team that are that is going to finish the race actually. So with bip number 11, this is team Slovenia 2 with uh, Silva Verbić and Bit Berkovnik. <laughs> ah, that's exactly the emotions we want to have from the Slovene right there. United States won. Finishing in 10th uh, place, Steven Schumann and Elika Malazinski. It's Team Austria. One on 8th place. Of course, they lost the positions on track, but maintained a certain gap towards uh, Slovenia and the United States, but not by much, as you can see in our graphics. So it's been a close call for these positions. With bib number 13, we see Greta Pinzani for Team Italy. Three. But it's not 11th place because United States, too, with uh, Grant Andrews and Alexa Brabeck are still finishing ahead of them. Czech Republic. On 13th with Yiji Konvalinka and Teresa Koltowska. And last but not least, Team Poland, Joanna Kiel and Andrzej Szechowicz. And that's a wrap. All 14 teams that were allowed to finish the race did it. And we witnessed a historic victory of Team Norway by 11 seconds ahead of Team Germany 1 and 27 seconds ahead of Germany 2.